Jekyll is a static site generator. This basically means that it extends the functionality and efficiency of making static websites. Static meaning that the site doesn't interact with databases and isn't as user friendly to update, but it's much faster because of this. You write the content in different languages including Markdown, HTML, CSS, and it can be extended to use preprocessors like SAS. Once written, the static site is created and because these sites are simple files, you can host them on different web hosts, some for free such as GitHub Pages. There's a link below this video on how to host your Jekyll site on GitHub Pages. Jekyll is definitely worth learning to simplify development, even if it's just for making prototypes. If you're on a Mac or Linux based operating system, you can install it easily if you have Ruby and Ruby Gems on your system. Simply type in gem install Jekyll into the terminal to install it. If you're like me and have Windows, the process is a bit different. First, download and install Ruby installer with the link below. Now, download and install the corresponding development kit found on the same page. Open the command prompt by typing in cmd.exe in the start menu and type in rubydk.rb init and press enter. Now run rubydk.rb install and press enter. Finally install Jekyll with gem install Jekyll. If you ran into a problem, read the description and check the FAQ I linked to. Once installed, you can start a new site using your terminal or command prompt. First, navigate to where you want the site folder to be by typing cd and dragging the folder onto it and pressing enter. Now create the site by typing jekyll new site name. To view it in the browser, type jekyll serve w, which tells jekyll to create a local server so you can view it in the browser and the flag w tells it to watch for updates. Now go to localhost colon 4000 in your browser to view it. Jekyll's folder structure is a bit weird, so let me try to explain it. Folders that begin with an underscore are either part of Jekyll's site building process or ignored by Jekyll when it builds your site. The configuration file has data that tells Jekyll how you want your site to be built. The includes folder has partial HTML or other partials that you can include in your actual pages, which lets you only have to change one file instead of all of them. The layouts folder has template layouts that will hold the content. Instead of repeating your code, you instead only have one file that you write. Posts is where the blog posts are held and include only the content of your site that will be used in conjunction with the layout files. The plugins folder holds extensions that make Jekyll more powerful. The site folder is what Jekyll makes when it creates your site. The contents in this folder is what will be your finished product. The full description of the file structure can be seen on Jekyll's site linked below. There are plugins that you can include to make Jekyll more powerful. One of the plugins I use converts SAS files into CSS and includes it automatically in the head file that's included. Begin by making a file in the layouts folder. This should be like any normal HTML page. There are many tags written in YAML that Jekyll reads and interprets when making your site. You can use this tag to indicate the page title. This tag will render the content. To make the actual content, make an HTML file in the root directory and use this format. To add a layout to a page, simply write layout, colon, then write what you call the HTML file in the layout folder. You can also add more information such as the title of the page. Everything under this top part will be considered content in the page. Jekyll is a powerful tool for making simple sites that don't get updated often, sites that you update since you know how Jekyll works, or prototype sites. If you want to learn more about Jekyll, the full documentation is linked underneath this video. Thanks for watching.